You know, when I think about the Adirondacks, this is what I picture. I'm good. How about yourself? Good, good. Good. Just coming in for day use? Um, or are you checking? Yeah, in? I was planning to do some backpacking. I was wanted to leave my car here. Okay, how many nights are you going to leave it parked here? Uh, it's probably going to be... I'm planning to come back Tuesday. So like three, I guess. Three days. Am I able to park up by the lake up there? Yep, you can park up in the boat area, boat launch parking lot area. Okay. Well, hello, my friends. Welcome to Putnam Pond Campground here in Ticonderoga, New York. We are in the Adirondack Mountains. It is the day before the official start of fall. It's 12 o'clock. It's a beautiful Saturday. And lying behind me is the 47,000 acre Faro Lakes Wilderness. Over the next three days, we are going to be exploring this wilderness, weaving our way amongst the ponds, lakes, and mountains, exploring, filming, and documenting what we can to show this incredible landscape here in the Adirondack Mountains of New York. I thank you for joining me. I appreciate you, and we are set up for an amazing adventure. All right, so we are generally heading west. Our goal for today is a location known as Faro Lake. Faro Lake is a large lake, about 400 acres. It's really in the heart of the wilderness. It's what the wilderness is named after. And uh, it should be about five and a half miles till we get there. Um, like I said, beautiful weather, about 66 degrees. It's a little after 12, the forest is gorgeous, and uh, this is going to be an exciting trip. I've been planning this trip for a long time, and uh, I can't wait to uh, show you guys everything there is out here to see. It's going to be magic. So my pack weighed in at about 23.5 pounds base weight, which I thought was pretty good. I've been working on trying to get the weight down in the pack. It always helps 
the more of these trips I go on, the more I learn what I really need and what I don't need. I ended up adding a few extra items and uh, because I was so low and uh, I also have two quarts of water on me so that's four more pounds so probably close to 28 pounds on me 29 pounds right now but it doesn't feel too bad although I am breaking out a little bit of a sweat I have to remind myself to take my time and enjoy it because I don't have to be anywhere till Wednesday at 6 a.m. We have now reached the south shore of Putnam Pond and over behind me is the campground. You can see the island there where there's a few folks exploring the island. From this point we'll be heading into the wilderness. But one of the unique things about Putnam Pond here is you can boat across the lake instead of hiking like we just did. They also have uh, wilderness campsites all around the lake that you can hike to or boat to. It's a unique feature of New York State campgrounds. And uh, it's really peaceful out here and uh, just a neat spot. So, but we continue on. We continue to pass over small streams on these footbridges and uh, you can tell the water level is low and there's lots of leaves on the ground or right on the cusp of fall. How spectacular will this place look in about two weeks? Oh my gosh, as beautiful as it is, but man, this place is going to light up with color in the coming weeks. Get a little bit of rain, these streams will be flowing like crazy. These little trickles will turn into mini falls. Wow. All right, so we've reached uh, another trail junction. There's a small spur trail going off to the left. It says trail around pond. So this should take us out to the Grizzle Ocean and to the lean-to where we can take a nice break, hopefully. Hopefully there's no one there. I don't think there will be, but I guess you never know. Not a bad little spot to spend the night and you have the water right out there now we're only 2.1 miles in and you already have this tremendous sense of isolation can you imagine when it gets dark out here looking out over the lake with the stars and uh one of my contingency plans is that if i had gotten here later if i hadn't gotten to our starting point until like two or three or four o'clock i might have just came to here for the first night but because it's so early, we're going to continue on to, uh, to Faro Lake.
So we just passed through a section of the trail from that boardwalk. Right past that boardwalk, I ran into a, an older couple who was walking the trails and the uh, trail got real muddy for about half a mile, maybe three quarters of a mile. And just seen a bunch of like red Fs, about a half dozen of them crawling around on the ground. So a little bit of an overgrown section. Uh, it's opening up again here, but not the most, ooh, as I trip, not the most uh, scenic stretch. Getting a little buggy in here too, probably because it's a low-lying area. Faro Lake Wilderness, notorious for being really bad with bugs in the summer. Um, I think the lack of rain is probably helping keep that down a little bit. Plus there's a little bit of a breeze, so I'm hoping they don't pick up as we uh, get to the lake, but we'll find out. So I had to stop here for a moment to get my bearings because we've been cruising along in this direction for the last like mile and a half, two miles, and then all of a sudden, bang, the trail just stopped. And I just happened to see a little faint trail going up in that direction, and it turns out that I had to check my map, which is why it's always good to have a paper map with you. And sure enough, it shows on the map like a 90 degree turn, but why there's no sign there or marker, I don't know. There probably should be. But anyway, after I stop here for a minute and get some water, we're gonna go over this little hill here. We should drop into a uh, little ravine past something called Wolf Pond and then, then be at Farrow Lake. So we're doing good. I'm still not sure if we're going the right way here. We're going almost directly back in the opposite direction we were coming from. Now, the way I'm going lines up with the paper map, but Google Maps on my phone shows me way off the trail, but there are yellow markers here. So I gotta keep following this a little bit further. And uh, there is an open area to my left. Looks like that could be Wolf Pond. But that just goes to show you, when you come out here into places like this, I mean, sometimes Google Maps is wrong. And uh, sometimes the uh, paper maps are old. You just gotta figure out your way, stay calm. You know, we'll get there. Look at that. That's my shoe. It literally sucked right off of my foot and it's in that goop of mud. Holy crap. Wow. Things are starting to get interesting now, aren't they? Okay, well, good thing is my foot's completely soaked now, but I did bring an extra pair of socks and I did bring a pair of camp shoes so I can dry out uh, my sock and shoe there, hopefully, once we establish camp. <laughs> that was, I've heard of quicksand, but that was quick mud. I had to put the uh, camera down for a while there and just focus on what I was doing because the trail got real. I mean, without these yellow discs, I almost had to turn around. Actually, I turned around once and turned around the other way. I got really confused. The, the trail doubled back on itself. The Google Maps showed me going way off course. I've never been back here before, so uh, 
I want it wilderness. Well, yeah, I got it. <laughs> and some, some parts of these trail, you can't even tell where the trail is. We're in a nice section right now, but I feel confident we're back on track now. It's approaching four o'clock, so I thought we'd already be at the lake by now. But I think we're, we're getting there. Uh, keep your fingers crossed. Well, it looks like we finally have reached Faro Lake. It says Putnam Pond, 5.2 miles. That felt like a heck of a lot longer than 5.2 miles. And now there's a side trail around the lake, so we can either go left or right. Uh, I think I'm gonna go right first and try to get a look at the lake and get my bearings. I don't think anyone else is out here, but it is a Saturday, so. I was hoping to get out to that point there, that peninsula, that looks awesome. But there's a group of like six or eight guys that look like they're gonna be pretty loud. And they said they're out on that point. So I'm gonna continue down the shore this way. There's three lean-tos and a bunch of campsites and try to get some distance from them. And, uh, but I wanna find a campsite soon cause I'm getting tired and I wanna set up. But this is our first look at Faro Lake, 411 acres. One of the largest lakes in the Adirondacks, completely sur surrounded by wilderness. Still looking for a place to camp just past the lean-to. There was a father and son there and uh, I mean it's looking so beautiful out over the lake and I just want to settle down. He said the next lean-to he thinks is occupied but the one after that he thinks might be empty. So we have to take what we can get at this point. All right well we have found a site. It's not a lean-to, but it's a nice site, and it's right on the lake, so I think it'll do. It's so beautiful out there. I just want to sit out there and watch the sunset. It's about six o'clock and we are on the water so that's a good thing i don't think there's going to be a fire tonight though because this place is picked through clean and it's pretty much all spruce trees above and not really anything that's worth burning that's okay it's going to be early to bed early to rise me some ramen soup. I'm gonna sit here quietly. I might even dip my feet in the water here. It drops off about five, six feet. Perfect swimming hole. There's fish right here. And uh, hopefully see some stars tonight. That would be awesome. Thank you. 
Good morning. Day two of our adventure here in the Farrow Lake Wilderness. It's 7 a.m. and I've just broken down camp. The sun should be coming up over the hillside within the hour. Uh, our goal for today, as I probably stated yesterday, is Farrow Mountain, the highest point in the wilderness at 2,500 feet. It's going to be a 1,300 foot climb over 1.2 miles. But I want to start walking. It's still dark in the woods. I want to start walking. We have to go around this end of the lake and then come up and then find Farrow Mountain Trail. So we're making our way towards the outlet of Farrow Lake, walking through this beautiful spruce forest, thick moss everywhere, it's gorgeous. And uh, it's a good thing we took that campsite we did because every single campsite in Lean-To I've come across has been occupied. So that's what you're gonna get here on a Saturday, probably tonight, certainly tomorrow night. I bet you almost all of them will be empty. So we've now reached the outlet of Farrow Lake. We got across this wooden bridge, and then it's going to be 1.7 miles till we make it to the Farrow Mountain Trail. So uh, that's what we got going for us. And uh, I really need to find a water source. I really don't want to drink out of this pond, but I might have to. Well, I'm going to look at a map to see if there's any streams coming down the mountain up ahead. We're starting to make our way above the lake a little bit. We're back in there like a deciduous forest. You can hear some loons calling off the lake and the sky is uh, getting blue. So looks like things are starting to brighten up a little bit. All right, so I'm stopped here briefly, taking a break. Uh, the trail took me down low towards the water again. I had to fill up in the fill up in the lake. Um, there's not going to be any water source going up the mountain. There's not going to be any water on top of the mountain. I'm completely out of water. Uh, I did pass a fellow hiker. They said they were taken from the lake, so that makes me feel a little better. It doesn't smell good. Uh, 
I'm just hoping the Sawyer does its job. And uh, I put some Gatorade in that water bottle to try to offset the taste because it is really bad. But um, I just filled up one quart. Hopefully when we crest the mountain, we'll come to a stream somewhere. There has to be water, better water source somewhere and we'll take it from there. But taking my chances here. So hopefully it's okay. Well, we'll find out and soon enough. First set of cliffs on the mountain. And the mountains here in the Faro uh, Lake Wilderness are not very tall compared to some of the like high peaks per se, but they're known for being very steep and very uh, rocky like that. Absolutely brutal coming up here as you could probably imagine. I can actually hear some voices on the trail below me. They're probably gonna pass me at some point. But we're making progress because we've left the deciduous forest and we're back in the spruce. That always means you're climbing an elevation. And we're getting to these points where the trail is nothing but bare rock covered in a bit of a pine duff but wow this is rough but onward we go We are approaching the summit of Faro, and you can see here everything's got a golden color now. These ferns at the top of the mountain are looking a lot different. It's looking beautiful up here. Really nice. From here, looking out, of course down there is Faro Lake. We were on that opposite uh, shore camping last night. And then we came in through this way. That mountain directly in front is Treadway. And on the other side of Treadway is Putnam Pond. Far in the distance beyond is the Green Mountain Range in Vermont. All right. So here we are at the top of Faro Mountain, the highest point in the wilderness, and there's views in all directions. Uh, it's about 12 noon, I'm gonna eat lunch. Um, I haven't been feeling myself. I'm just feeling extremely fatigued. So I'm not gonna push myself as far into the wilderness as I had wanted to. And I think what I'm gonna do actually is spend the night up here. I've always wanted to spend the night on the top of a mountain like this. And uh, if we get stars like we did uh, last night, that would be unbelievable. The, uh, there's, a, there's a couple guys that are actually camping at the designated campsite. They told me they're getting ready to pull off in about an hour. So I told them I'm going to grab that spot. All right, so here's home for night number two. 
and uh, those fellas that were here, they left me a huge pile of firewood. I added to it a little bit. You see, I got the fire going already, and uh, probably going to be the most amazing place I've ever camped at in my life, because 50 feet that way is an, an unobstructed, crazy view over the Faro Lake wilderness. 50 feet that way is a view over the whole entire central core of the Adirondack Mountains, including the high peaks. And conditions tonight are supposed to go down to about, um, I think, 48 or 50. Uh, mostly clear, like partly cloudy. So hopefully we'll get some more uh, pictures of the night sky. And uh, man, I'm just super fired up to spend the night up here. I've been keeping the fire small, letting it build up, dying down, just keeping the, the coals hot for when it gets dark. But let's go check out the view on the other side. <laughs> this is like a, uh, a bounty of ridges. Oh my gosh. Well, all right guys, so it's about, it's about almost six o'clock and uh, I think I made a decision. I think I'm going to retrace my steps the way I came in and head back. Um, like I keep saying, I'm, I'm not sure what's wrong with me. I don't know if I'm dehydrated. Um, which maybe I haven't drank enough on this trip, but I was drinking a gallon of water every day for the six days before I came out here. And I wanted to make this the best video I ever made, but that's obviously not gonna happen. But when you're out here like this, you gotta, um, you gotta be smart. And uh, I don't know, I, I, gotta, I gotta turn back tomorrow because my legs are like jello, like jello, and I just have no energy. I'm just so fatigued. I, I don't know. But I'm okay. I'll make it through the night. I'll be, I'll, I'll feel better tomorrow. And uh, that's where we're at. So, got a nice campfire going. Don't mean to be Debbie Downer here, but I'm just keeping it real. And uh, still setting up for a beautiful sunset all around, and hopefully some nice uh, star photography uh, later on tonight. So. So I'm just sitting quietly out here now by the fire and uh, 
it's getting dark. Unfortunately, it's getting cloudy. The last forecast I got said it was going to be clear skies tonight. So of course it's cloudy. But hopefully maybe later it'll clear up. The thing is, the moon rises at about 9 o'clock and starts giving artificial light. But uh, just trying to keep myself occupied. It's a little spooky being up here on the mountain all by myself. Every time I hear something in the woods, I turn around and look. So I'm trying to keep the fire going. I got this nice lantern. I wasn't going to bring it, but I'm glad I did. It gives off a lot of light. And I also got a flashlight and a headlamp. So I got plenty of light, but it's a little different being up here. A little different. I'm in my tent now. The fire is dying down. I'm keeping a good eye on it from here. I'm going to do what I did last night. I'm going to start setting up to go to sleep. And then maybe in about an hour, hour and a half, I'll walk back out and see if the skies have cleared. Because right now you can't see any stars or anything. It's a real bummer. But um, that's about it right now. Welcome to La Casa Gator on Faro Mountain. All right, <laughs> it's been an interesting one. I'll see you later, maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow. Well, good morning, 7 a.m. And it's Monday morning and we are still here at the campsite on Faro Mountain. It's still cloudy and it's gotten quite a bit chillier than it was yesterday so and today's supposed to be uh cooler um so one of the interesting things about the campsite here on faro mountain is that i get a little bit of cell service and it's telling me in the nearby town of shroon new york it's 53 degrees so i'm venturing that it's probably about 48 or 49 up here it's that We've had steady breezes all all night. Um, the clouds never broke, so I was never able to get any uh, shots of the stars last night, unfortunately. But uh, we're gonna walk out to the overlook here, one of the overlooks, and see if we can see a little bit of a sunrise. Sunrise was at 6.49, so it should be cresting over the hillside uh, if there is one. I'm going to stick to my plan I decided on last night and uh, start heading back the way I came in. Still feeling like very just fatigued in my legs and um, I just don't want a chance of pushing any deeper into the wilderness. So we're about eight miles in, eight and a half miles in, so we'll start making our way back. I'd like to make it to that Grizzle Ocean lean-to if I can. And uh, see how I feel at that point. If I feel pretty good, then there's another place we can check out that we haven't been to yet called Clear Pond. But uh, it's supposed to get really cold tonight, dropping, in, dropping into the low 40s, maybe like 40 degrees. So I don't know. We'll see. And it doesn't look like there's any, uh, any real spectacular sunrise out here either. But I'll turn the camera around in a second and and show it to you. It feels like fall overnight here in the Adirondacks. <laughs> it's got that chill in the air. I like it, but wish it was a little more colorful. I'll show you what it looks like.
yeah so not much to see there really that we haven't seen already um, I'm just gonna pack up camp and uh, start making my way down the mountain back down towards Farrow Lake All right, so we are almost at the bottom of this uh, trail up the mountain. Man, damn, this is a steep trail. I am, uh, I am not in good shape. Um, I feel like I'm deteriorating quickly. Uh, my legs are like jello. Uh, I'm not even, my vision is not good, it's blurry, I'm not seeing well. I feel like I want to pass out. No way I would have made it up the, the trail today. So my plan is when we get down to the lake, I'm going to fill up a quart of water from the lake. I'm going to cut in two packs of Gatorade to get that nasty lake taste away. I'm going to chug that, uh, eat a uh, kind bar, and um, sit down for a minute I'm gonna take a Tylenol and then we're gonna rest a bit hopefully that'll help me out a little bit then we're gonna work our way slowly around the lake now where I came in at to the lake there's like a small waterfall I didn't film it because there were people there but that looks like an excellent place to fill up with good clean water so when we get to that point I'll fill both my water bottles up I'll probably uh, I'm definitely dehydrated above whatever else is going on and um, I'll definitely pound a quart of water there and maybe two quarts and then fill up two more quarts uh, to take with me and uh, I'm just gonna move real slow I've never never experienced nothing like this before so uh, if you're seeing this video I made it but it's not the video I wanted to make and it's I'm not in good shape this is uh, I'm in survival mode right now all right, catch you up ahead. Back down at the lake now. And it's, it's, it's so weird, like as soon as I stop moving, I feel fine. And as soon as I start moving, I feel like I'm, I'm dying. Uh, but look, I got fluids, uh, I know where I'm at, it's a beautiful day, so I'm just going to take my time, move slow, work my way around the lake, and like I said, get to that small little waterfall area, probably going to be about 1.2 miles, a mile maybe, and uh, we'll stop again. So we're going to make it. It's been a learning lesson here, but that's what life's all about. So all kinds of storm damage along the trail here in this section. Uh, all these trees knocked in, making it difficult to get by. Must have been some kind of microburst came through here. Oh, Jesus. Oh my god. So clearly this section of the Farrow Lake Trail is uh, in need of trail maintenance but it's like also rarely used. 
we've gone through about an eighth of, mile, of a mile of nothing but blowdowns and bushwhacking. You know, just what I needed here. But, uh, looks like Faro Lakes is throwing everything they can at me. Oh, hopefully the trail clears up now. So this side of the trail along the lake, definitely I feel that it's less used and much less uh, scenic than the uh, section we traveled along yesterday morning. I've seen a couple campsites, one decent one, a couple not so decent ones. And this needs a lot of maintenance out here too. Not in great shape. So it's 10.15, I just passed a sign for a trail junction saying it's 1.2 miles, I think. So we need to get to where I wanna go around this lake. And uh, man, I am moving at the pace of molasses, but at least we're moving. I feel marginally better than I did earlier this morning, but uh, this has got to be the most rugged um, lakeshore trail I've ever been on. Looks like we're coming to another lean-to here. I don't think there's anyone in here, so let's stop in here and take a break. So we're stopped here at this lean-to. I'm not sure what number this is. It might be number four. Uh, there's a sign that says there's a privy back in the woods. So I think I might, uh, I might go check that out. I think it's about time. And uh, But this is a nice spot. Nice view of the lake. Very clean. So yeah, there's no one out here today. It's a Monday. So it's pretty quiet out here. All right, the trail is pulling us away from the lake now. We've just left the lean-to. We're in another one of these beautiful mossy hemlock forests. And I think we're like basically cutting over a peninsula. But uh, yeah, still conditions are the same. Almost looks and feels like it's gonna rain, which would be like that would just be the icing on the cake for this trip. <laughs> But uh, I do feel better. I do feel a bit invigorated after that pit stop. Beautiful large trees here. Some of these stands bordering on old growth with some of these white pine especially.
Wow. Well, it's really lush in this section here. One of the appeals of the Faro Lake Wilderness, no doubt about it, is that it's overlooked by its more famous, you know, cousins, the High Peaks Wilderness and the giant mountain area. So all the tourists and people, white face, tend to flock to those areas. And, you know, this place kind of falls under the radar. So you do get a good sense of solitude here. And it is very beautiful. But it is a wilderness. It is rugged. I'll give you that. I'll tell you that. So we finally have made it back to a point where we've been. So we circled all the way around Faro Lake, up Faro Mountain. And from here, it's 3.5 miles back to Grizzle Ocean Trailhead, a uh, lean-to. So I'm gonna fill up with water here, and then we're gonna make our way back slow but steady. It's 11.30 now, so my goal is to get there by four o'clock. So she'll be perfectly manageable. I just filled up down there at the little waterfall there. I just power chugged 50 ounces of water and I got 64 to go with me. So I already feel better. I'm starting to think maybe I was just dealing with, di with dehydration yesterday uh, from that climb up and uh, maybe that was causing my muscles to fatigue and cramp. It's probably what it was. But anyway, I'm feeling a lot better. We got 3.5 miles to go to the, to the Grizzle Ocean Lean-To, and it's 12 o'clock on the dot. So let's try to get there by 4 and uh, set up and have a, have a nice evening. I'd like to collect some firewood and get a fire going because it's going to get cold tonight. All right, see you up ahead. We are now about half a mile away from the Grizzle Ocean lean-to. Now, I did encounter one pair of hikers, a young couple, going the opposite direction of me. Uh, but I'm not sure where they were going because the, one guy, the guy had a day pack and a fishing rod, but the, the lady didn't really have anything. So I have this suspicion, this hunch, that maybe they dropped some gear at the Grizzle Ocean lean-to and they are going out for a day hike. If that's the case, then we have two options. To either head back to Putnam Pond completely and spend the night in the campground, which is, it's a Monday and it should be quiet, or we can try for Clear Pond lean-to, which I'd have to take the map out and find that, but I don't think it's that far away. At any rate, I'm uh, back to feeling like my old self, moving at a good clip, and we're making good time. So we still got plenty of options. Back to that uh, boardwalk we passed on day one. It's one of my favorite spots on the, on the trail here. This thing's pretty rickety though. It looks like it's ready to cave in. The boards kind of bounce a little bit. Uh, beautiful view though, out to the pond. And then in the other direction, to those wetlands there. One of the cool features of the trail here. But we're almost at Grizzle Pond, Grizzle Ocean, lean to, so let's see what we got. All right, moment of truth. We got it. All right. First order of business before I even do anything is to get some firewood together. As you can see, it's primarily a grove of hemlock 
and spruce but there are some birch mixed in the good thing about the birch is it's easy to spot on the ground and birch burns really well plenty of birch bark too so i'm gonna have to travel far and wide to gather firewood that's gonna be my uh that's gonna be my main objective here So it's about 4.30 and uh, I'm set up here at Grizzle Ocean Lean To. I've got my tent set up in the Lean To. I'm not sure if that's a good idea or not, but I'm going to try it. Uh, I've never slept in a Lean To before. Uh, temperatures are supposed to drop to maybe like the low 40s, possibly 40 degrees, possibly even lower than that. So I figure the extra warmth of uh, being in there. I gathered up as much uh, firewood as I could place has been picked through pretty pretty good and most of the birch wood uh, is not in the best shape but I think we'll get something going uh, I'm gonna start cooking dinner in a little bit and then there's nothing more to do but just relax and listen to the sounds of nature and uh, hopefully we'll get some loons come out on the on the pond and, and make some noise and yeah that's about it so nice and peaceful and relaxing here. And this is what I asked for. This is what I'm getting. So. Well, I have to say, considering where this day started, and I was in real trouble, I'm not kidding you, uh, it couldn't be ending more perfect. It's so peaceful out there, the fire is burning great, it's giving off tremendous warmth here in this little lean-to. The last glimmers of light are reflecting off of Grizzle Ocean, the pond there, it's as still as glass. And um, this is a real blessing to be out here. This is Adirondack magic right here. I'm glad you're here sharing it with me. Not a, not a human sound for, I haven't heard anything since I've been here.
Well, good morning. Day number four here from the Faro Lake Wilderness on the banks of the Grizzle Ocean Pond, where I was able to film and document the, Mil the Milky Way once again over the lake last night. Very quiet night last night, sitting by the fire, my first time in a lean-to. And it's 7 a.m., I'm packing up, and this adventure is coming to an end. And it's always sad when an adventure comes to an end, but it only means that a new one is about to begin. So I want to take this time to say thank you, and I appreciate you for watching the video and joining me on this adventure. It wasn't quite the full trip that I had hoped, but that just means we have to come back to document the rest of it at another time. It's pretty cold out here. I'm not going to stand out here too long by the lake. If you have any comments or questions about the video, please let me know. And if you could give the video a like, I'd really appreciate it. And that's about it, guys. I'm going to head home. I'm going to miss this place. But it's time to go home. You know, when I think about the Adirondacks, this is what I picture. Six million acres of wilderness. An experiment in conservation. The Faro Lakes wilderness is 47,000 acres. Within the wilderness are over 70 miles of trails. Dozens of lakes and ponds and wetlands. You can drink right out of these ponds and these lakes. You can swim in them. Scattered through the forest are stands of old growth. Although the mountains here aren't the tallest in the region. They are rugged and they are steep. There is no more magical sound than hearing the call of the loons on the lake as dusk settles into evening. Within the boundaries of this wilderness, it's possible not to see anybody or hear anybody or hear any sounds of civilization. This place is very special to me, as it is to many people. There's something about this land that calls to me, that beckons me, and draws me back again and again.